All right, it's the quarterfinal everybody's talking about. England versus France, set to go down next Saturday. The odds makers have France as your favorites. However, the computers tell a very different story. The SPI is saying England are your favorites. Who better to uh, help us break this down than a couple colleagues who have become much more than that <laughs> over the last week. How sentimental he's getting. Nada Manua yeah, and Julian Laurent. You see them all the time on ESPN FC. Oh, we yeah. brought them gifts here on Football Americas. Scars that they, I'm sh sure, will proudly wear uh, throughout Doha. And uh, guys, to to sign that for you before you great leave. to have you here on the show, man. Thank you, what, finally, what to get an invitation. Thank you. I Please, mean, we waited three before, weeks. No? He must have been on before. He's been on actually. Five years ago when yes. André Pierre Gignac signed for Tigres. That's right. It was, oh, that uh, was we were doing a <laughs> Tovan, have right? Have you been on Gavin Jules? No, I have uh, not. Have you been on Gavin Jules? Uh, there no, we no, go. No, no, there no, it is. You've sure been on it. Yeah, I've, I've been on just a week ago, I think it was. Yes. Okay. This is good. Third time's a charm now. So there it is. <laughs> um, all right, so we just saw there's some debate there between the computers yep. and the odds makers, right? So who's the favorite for you, Jules? France or England? <laughs> I, I think the, the easy answer is 50-50, but I still think this England team has a slight edge over the French simply because the danger can come from everywhere. Whereas France, which is not a bad thing, that's not what I'm saying, but is very dependent on Kylian Mbappe and his talent. And I think that dependence on Mbappe could work fine and there's no problem, but the day he's on, he's, got, he's having an off day. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how the rest of the team reacts. Does he have off days? Yeah, I mean, he's got five goals, two assists right now. Yeah, but there, there will be a point where he will have an off day. I, I don't know if he can win this on his own pretty much. However, for England, you've got Saka, you've got Ken, you've got Foden, you've got Bellingham. He can come from everywhere, more than the French. That's why I give them like a 55 to 45 chance. Nathan. Really? Is, but who, for England? Yeah. Is he hedging well. his bets here? <laughs> you know, it's the emotional one. You uh -huh. try and say, well, this is my opinion, but if it's wrong, I'm more than happy to be happy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> he's going the forward. emotional hedge yeah. is true. It's I'm true. objective. That's no, why, well, that's I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But I, I, do, um, I do like it because I think it's, it's sort of being fair. I think there's some people who don't like England, but he's actually calling what he's seen as opposed to what he kind of feels. Mm -hmm. But then the opposite is also true for people in England who are very down on their team, like, oh, but France, they're going to do this. But I think when they look at France, they're more so playing the brand name as opposed to the team that's there now. We all know Mbappe is one of the best players in the yeah. world, and he's a huge threat. But man for man, if you were to do like a best or like a combined 11, mm -hmm. it's probably not going as much France as say some people would think, because they are a good side, but so are England, like Jules has just said. Yeah. All right, well, England's a very good side, and they're very yeah. deep. Like, that's probably, they're probably the deepest team in this competition. But I also saw them struggle. I mean, Iran crossed the field three times they scored twice against the U.S. I saw the U.S. really take it to this English team uh, and, and almost make them pay for it. Against Senegal, if not for Pickford, you're talking 0-2 before the 32nd minute. So you're saying he did his job? Well, Pickford, but what I'm, what I'm telling you is it's a very deep team, but they have their weaknesses too. Yeah. And uh, you were saying, killing Mbappe, a lot rides on him, but he can surely make this English team pay. Yeah, the only, th the only problem is there will be an anti-Mbappe plan. Whether that's Walker on his own, whether you put Stones with that, whether you put Saka or Henderson or whoever, or the, them three together, there will be something to, to block him and to stop him, which is fine, absolutely fine. And he might be good enough to still, even against the plan against him, manage to score another goal or do something special. The, the problem is... I think the others are too reliant, too reliant, yeah. reliant yeah, right, on him yeah. in the sense that, and we saw it, but there was something that Deschamps said to the boys before the game against, uh, against Poland. He said, give the ball to Kylian. The instruction is very much give him the ball, give him the ball all the time. You have the ball, give him the ball. So whether you're Upamecano or Kunde or Rabio or Dembele, the ball has to go to Kylian, which I think at some point could be counterproductive. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think I, I know where you're coming from. But then he's obviously one of the best players in the world, so you kind of do want to get it to him. Yeah. Right. But, it, you know, in regards to the story you had about, say, England playing in this and doing that, struggling against this team and that team, I think one thing to note is that those teams aren't still here anymore. So they've still managed to get past them in whatever way that they've, that they've done it. And I think they have, did have a poor performance within there, but there were positives that came within it. Like in the USA game, I thought defensively they ended up being quite good. I think in the Iran game, they did concede those two goals, but they did score six. So for every negative, you can find a positive. And depending on your perspective, you know, you, you get to pick and choose which one matters the most to you. It sounds like you're saying that there's some pessimism back in England. Oh, a uh, thousand percent. Around this. <laughs> yeah. What about in France? It's the defending World Cup champions. Do they see this 
do, do your colleagues, do the people back home in France, do they see France as clear favorites here, or is there some shared pessimism on that side? No, there's no pessimism on our side. Uh, they, they're not too scared about England because there's, there's Mbappé. Right. And again, all the chat today on French radio, for example, was like, oh, are the English scared of Kylian? This is all, all they cared about was, are they scared of Killian? How much are they scared of Killian? And do you think they can stop Killian? It's, it was, this is all, and this is going to be like that until Saturday. Uh, what kind of plan do they have against Killian? What are they going to do against Killian? It's, this is it. And, and I think the French believe right now, and maybe rightly so, like the Argentine believe with Messi, that just nothing can happen to us because Killian is there. My, so, go ahead. I was just going to say, my only worry for the French is we saw them in group play. They played a very underwhelming Australia, they played a very underwhelming Denmark team. That was supposed to be a, a favorite for a many. Dark a dark horse, horse right? that that ended up not being that. Uh, they rested player players against Tunisia, so let's take that one out. But then they play against Poland, that was easily, for my money, the second worst European team here in this competition. So, has the competition been good enough to really test France? Is my only worry. No, I think you're right. I think if you take Copa Meccano, for example, who has had a good season with Bayern, who is very promising, and his partnership with Varane could be very interesting because they complement each other well and I think he benefits from the experience from Varane and Varane benefits from the legs and the pace and the, the, the solidness of, of Upamecano. But then Lewandowski was easy to defend against the other night yeah. and so was Zelensky. And Hurricane would be a completely different kind of guy to defend on because he drops all the time, because he's so intelligent and so clever that you, do I go, do I stay? And I think they will have to be on their toes. So you're right. I think if you look at the fullbacks, which is probably the biggest weakness that we have right now, Kunde, especially Kunde on the right hand side. Theo on the left is different because he's so attacking minded that it might actually be useful against Saka because right. he might pin Saka down yeah. because Saka will have to follow him everywhere. But for Kunde, I'm worried. And then for Pamecano and Varane, I don't know how they will defend on Kane and how effective they can be on Kane. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get into some of the specific matchups, but where do you think England can hurt France? I think it's what he said, you know, spending lots of time with Julian, you get an understanding of the French team and sort of the way that he feels about it. Because from, you know, from an English perspective, people say France are the best thing that's ever existed ever, but they haven't also watched the games. But it's like, oh, you know, they're great. <laughs> you, what, oh, well, what's great about them? Well, you know, the way that they do the thing and like, they don't know what they're talking right. about. It's Mbappe. Exactly, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Mbappe. That's the obvious thing. But Julian, he sort of explains it more and you look for it more and you start to see some of the weaknesses. And I think there are lots of sides within this who aren't perfect. But it's just a case of, you know, on a particular day, how do the matchups work, whether it's individual ones or collective? And I think that's going to be the big difference when you go out into the knockout rounds like this. Who are you taking, Seb? You're taking Chouameni, Rabio, and Griezmann? Are you taking Bellingham, Rice? You're taking... It's a tough one, and to your point... Because that midfield, to me, I think is, is the key there. Well, to yeah. your point about the best 11, like, Bellingham, to me, is the only one that's... A, there's a gap, that he's, like, an obvious... If you're doing a combined 11, he's obvious. Are the, are the other midfielders, like, take your choice, right? They're all, they're all pretty much the same level? I think Rice for me is world class. I have to say, so for you me, the Rice Bellingham partnership is really yeah. So two of the three then yeah. are all three. You know, two of the three are English. Yeah. If we're doing a best eleven in the midfield, yeah. and wow. then I've got either Rabio or Griezmann to, to Rabiot's bring in. Been playing He's very got Jordan well. Henderson because yeah. they're brothers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine. That's right. fine. I pick my brothers too when of we course, do combine of course, eleven. Of course. And you picked Senegal as well, didn't you? But we yeah, don't yeah, need to get into that. Yeah, yeah, because my boys say that, so it's fine. It's fine. The thing with Griezmann, and it's one of the other keys, is that this is a new position for him, that number eight. Mm -hmm. He's been doing really, really well against kind of weaker opposition. Can he influence the game against England, against that midfield, the way that he did against Denmark, the way he did against Poland? He won't have the same freedom. Will he still be able to play one touch, two touches there? What and do you there mean he won't have the game? same freedom? What do you mean by that? Because I think that I would, I would expect Southgate and the, 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 the staff and the team to have seen that he's such a key player for us. Mm -hmm. And I think for, for, for Poland, for example, I think Rikoviak at his age just could not keep up, could not follow everywhere. Okay. And we watched him the other day with Nadam and we were fascinated by the movement and the intelligence that he has, as well as the, the work rate and the touch, etc. He's clearing but balls out of the box. He's a different player for France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's completely different players. And, and I, love, I love what Rabiot has been doing because he compensates for Kylian so much. He's got such a key role to play in that team because Kylian never defends. So yeah. Rabiot has <laughs> to come and do that job and on top of everything else. And he's been great. So I don't know who be my third be, but maybe, maybe Rabiot. Yep. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.